Hey guys, it's Leo from Team Ragnarok again, and today I am bringing you my Astro Poet deck profile, which I finished the Brotherhood shop circuit in first place with. So, first of all, we get started with Giant Deity of Distant Love Valkyrian. He is your main win con of the deck. Essentially, he's just a 70k rearguard that has drive checks depending on what you send to the drop zone of his skill. Plus, you can restand him with Uranus as a skill, and Combined with Force 2, it's just really strong. Two swings at 70. Your opponent has to like pretty much guard both of those as well. Next up, we have our Great Freeze. We have four Holy Heavenly Dragon, AS Nessus Dragon. There's no reason not to max this card out as it does literally everything the deck needs. Uh, he can, well, <laughs> if you really want him to, he can make an Astral Plane, but if you need to, he can become a PG for discarding another Astro Poet or Valkyrian. But the main reason we play him is when play some rear guard, you can counter blast one, search your deck for Valkyrian, and get an imaginary gift force. So it's just a really strong skill, allowing you to search for the piece you need and get a force marker. So you can use this guy's skill, which is Origin Dirty of Heavenly Light Uranus. He is your main grave for your ride. You don't really want to ride into anything else, since he can make a Astral Plane for you only having three Force Markers in your Vanguard. So you can make three in your Vanguard through skills, and then when you ride him, you can put the Force 2 on the circle behind your Vanguard for Valkyrian to put be placed there. And then the main reason we play him is the auto skill again. Uh, at the end of the battle, Valkyrian attacks. You can rest two Astral Poets, restand Valkyrian, and he gets drive minus five. So what you are, what you really want to do is call Valkyrian down have your drive checks on him, whatever. Any triggers you hit from there, you want to put power to your vanguard so it can hit a number. Since you're taking force two, doesn't mean he gets any power. Then restand Valkyrian for his skill and then swing vanguard. Again, passing triggers to rearguard this time since your Valkyrian doesn't have drives anymore. But your opponent will most likely have to guard it at a Valkyrian swing anyway since it's 70k at two crit at least. Of course, then we also have three Gleaming Lord Uranus, uh, mainly played for the rearguard skill of Soul Blast 2, getting imaginary gift force. There are games where this doesn't come up, but then it's still a natural poet, so it's useful for Uranus to rest on the rearguard. And since many people have been suggesting it, we also added in one Quaking Heavenly Dragon, Astrayash Dragon. Um, the concept of this was, it was a good backup ride if for whatever reason I didn't get to ride the Origin Deity. Fortunately that scenario never came up, but if it did, this is still not bad to ride because on the Vanguard I can counter blast one to just get a gift. And if I call Valkyrian down for whatever reason, I can Soul Blast one to draw a card. Which is just filtering through my deck to search for an Origin Deity to ride next turn hopefully. Uh, since it never came up though, this was just another search target for like DK so I can generate force markers and place them rear guard so Uranus could rest it to stand Valkyrian. Then into grade twos we have three Arcturus of Fervent Will. Uh, in the soul she gets grade plus two so really useful for Uranus' skill since he needs to soul blast uh, sum of grades equal to five or greater. This is automatically like a huge portion of it. And then her main skill is can plus one when placed on Vanguard or Rearguard. You can reveal an Astral Deity or Astral Poet, so any of these like 16 cards in your deck, to get a Force Marker, place it on your Vanguard, and then if her Grade 1 support is in Soul, you get a Dora card. So again, just a really nice card to have since it's can plus one to draw a card essentially, plus you get a Force Marker out of it, which isn't too bad. And if you don't have one already, having a Force Marker, Force 2 Marker on turn 2 is pretty big, as you swing immediately to crit. As you'll notice my trigger lineup later on, it's pretty big tempo swing as well. So we then play 4, Phenomena Sort of Constellations. Um, this was just big rearguard swings, since he gets a uh, 5k for your Force Marker you have, so usually around 4 or 5. He swings to 25 without triggers and unboosted, which is really nice. And then if you have three or more force markers, you can counter blast one to draw a card. Uh, that skill didn't really come up too much since I didn't really need to use it. Plus the counter blast were better spent on stuff like 
Arcturus, Allura, Aeos Nessus Dragon, since they both generate markers for their skills. And in the grade ones we have two, Atlas of Heavenly Sphere. Uh, this skill become the, became to come up a lot more since I would usually call it down as an early booster behind my grade two or grade one and just be able to swing over a 5k shield so that it can't just drop a 5k for like one to pass. Uh, so one place on Vanguard, you can you have to soul charge one. That's not why you play him. But on the rear guard, you can counterblast one and move him to soul. You draw a card. If your Vanguard is an Astral Poet, which hopefully it is, but then you are grade three. You just get an imaginary gift force and put it in your Vanguard. So it's a Vanguard booster that can remove itself from the circle where you make your Astral Plane. Next, we have B Crafts of Stratification. This is a decent grade 1 ride if you have to. Because uh, when it's placed, you can Soul Blast 1 to a real one Astral Poet and Astral Deity from your hand. You search your deck for Arcturus or Fervent Will. Add it to your hand and then shuffle your deck. So if you ride this, it essentially guarantees you a grade 2 ride. Plus it sets up Arcturus' skill for having her in the soul. Uh, oh yeah, the other way to get her in the soul is when she is... Retired from the Guardian Circle, she can move herself in, which is really good because if you have to, you can throw her out as a 10k shield for like an early rush or something and just have her set up. Lastly, in the Grade 1s, I argue that this is the best one, it's DKF to Just Path. So at one place, you put a card from your hand to Soul. You set a top 7 card to your deck for up to 2 Astral Poets and add them to your hand. Then if you added 2, you get an imaginary gift force and put it in your vanguard. So my optimal grade one turn was I ride this and move B Cross into Soul, since I would already have this in my hand. Add two Astral Poets and immediately put a force down. So if I, even if I went second, it was still really strong because I would just swing for 8k to crit, allowing you to push for that early damage, which is nice of this deck. And then into grade zeros, we have four, which of Big Pots Loria. Still playing heals because having the ability to heal to recover from like being rushed early is really nice. Plus if you draw these, they're just 20k shields, which isn't too bad. And then different from last time, we have our eight regular crits and then four crit sentinel. Decided to go with 12 crits since I realised I can't really afford to store out games too much anymore. Plus if I hit them like early on along with my force 2, it just pushes them to 3. Making them guard every vanguard swing from then on since I'm force 2 and it will always be 2 damage. And of course we have our starter, Pan of New Style, that hasn't really changed too much. And I'll quickly cover the matchups before I give my thoughts on this deck. Um, so, I played this deck in week 3 and 4, since I had to skip week 2 unfortunately. So for week 3, in round 1 we had Melody. Uh, nothing too special to say about that, it was just another Bermuda deck. Fortunately he never really got like the engine going to accelerate too much, making a huge board. So I managed to win that pretty comfortably. Round 2, Chaos Breaker. That was a... Hmm, that was a... Not tricky matchup, but it was definitely interesting to say the least. Uh, so when he would call down Zirconium, which forces me to put the top card of my deck down as a lock card, I would just put it on the circle behind my vanguard, knowing that if I made an astral plane, the lock card would disappear. Uh, so I won game one pretty comfortably through that. However, in game two, he got to go in my Curse Breaker first. I didn't get into... Didn't get to ride, um, was it Origin Dirty first ride? So I had to slow down for a turn. Uh, so he just took two of my force markers by unlocking my locked card, which put me at zero again, meaning I had to generate a bunch again next turn. Managed to do that after surviving his like huge rear guards since he took my force markers. <laughs> so guarded through his turn, I rode Origin Dirty finally and managed to get out four force markers, which were like one behind Vanguard and three on Vanguard again. 
free under Vanguard. Allow me to finish the game off with Valkyrian from there. Uh, round three, we had Shaharet. Uh, can't really say too much since the guy was just really unlucky through it all. Game one, he just didn't see number of terror, meaning he couldn't like, have generated the hand he needed to survive Valkyrian. And then in game two, he saw the number of terror, but he didn't see like any soul charge pieces. He didn't hit the 10 soul needed and was just, uh, yeah, went downhill from there for him. And then round four, we lost against Prisms. The deck just generates so much hand advantage for essentially what is no cast. And of course, as multi attack on top of that, which is pretty damn strong. So I finished off uh, week three in second place, and on the points table, I was tied for first, meaning I entered round four, hoping to win it all at this point. Well, week four, not round four. Uh, week four only had three rounds due to low amount of players at that point. Round one, we had Night Rose. I knew how this matchup went. So I just had to push stuff early, and like since they didn't have enough to guard early on, it was a first turn, well not first turn, first grade 3 Valkyrian, and I just ended the game there. Game 2, he had to G assist, which means I get to see his hand, and plan my turns accordingly. So I saw he again had like no guard value, so I just threw myself on board and rushed him out. Uh, he also didn't have too much of a drop zone set up, so his Night Rose turn wasn't all that impressive. And then round two, we had Zeal. This was definitely like the most interesting matchup for me, since he could reduce my Vanguard power for every marker I make on the board. Uh, game one, I went first. He survived my Valkyrian turn through a six damage heal, like is what it is. Can't really complain about that. He went Brad Black into Zeal, and I had four Force Markers, so he put me at minus 12k. Uh, I essentially had to no guard his Vanguard swing when I was forced to Vanguard swing, even when I was on free, hoping he didn't hit the crit there. Luckily, he didn't, and I hit a damage trigger, which put me at, back at minus two, gave me giving me just enough to guard his rear guards and leaving me with one card in hand. At that point, I didn't have another Valkyrian, and I had no way to search it. And the card in my hand was a Gleaming Lord Uranus. So it got back on my, my turn. I top decked a DK. And I was like, so I just have to go for it here. I called a DK down on rear guard, moved the Uranus to Soul, and searched the top seven cards for an Aeosinesis Dragon, which there was only one left in my deck. Fortunately, I found it, added it to hand, called it down, and searched Valkyrian, and ended the game there. Uh, game two, he chose to let me go first for some reason, which was an interesting choice. So again, I just went for the standard play of dropping Valkyrian on my great free turn, and luckily this time he didn't heal out of it, so I just managed to end the game. Round three, we had Night Medals. Uh, went first in game one again, which was good, meaning I could push everything out of his hand. But well, all the combo pieces if he chose to guard my swings. Unfortunately, he didn't have enough and died to Valkyrian on the first turn again. And then game two, he went first, uh, got to grade three, went for his full rush turn. Unfortunately for him, I hit a damage trigger, which enabled me to guard the rest of his turn pretty easily. And then it got back around to me, and it was just drop Valkyrians and he had no PGs. And the game just ended there. As for how I'm feeling about this deck, I feel like it's a pretty solid deck and I'm pretty comfortable playing with against like more of the popular decks right now. Like especially like Gavrel, since I have SNSS Dragon as PG. So I can just uh, guard Hamio off that and be able to survive. And if they don't and since they don't play heals, they can easily die to a random Valkyrian swing and multiple crits. Uh, if there's anything I'd change about the deck, i say probably not. I think, like, I'm pretty comfortable to solicit as is. There's no reason to change anything right now. Anyways, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!